Hi, good morning. This is Stampin' Gloria. Actually, my name is Gloria Valle, and I'm here today for 10 on Tuesday. Thank you for joining me. I hope you'll like today's projects. I am featuring a couple of stamp sets and the rainbow colors, the 2018, 2020 in colors from Stampin' Up! will be retiring at the end of May. And I wanted to show you how beautiful those colors, certainly a great way to begin collecting your colors and uh, having a, a vast array of beauty. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Tiffany. How are you? Good morning. Thank you for joining me. All right. What I'll also be featuring is the use of the Stamparatus. It is a really cool tool. And I have to admit, when I first saw it, I wasn't really sure how it was going to benefit me, but... Since I've been using it, I've learned a little, a little bit more and certainly several uh, really unique tricks that I think you'll find fun to try and uh, make a variety of cards with. All right, so um, let's go ahead and get started. Make sure I have you centered so you can see my projects. And try not to shake you too much. There we go. I think we're good. All right. So today's featured cards are um, one using all five of the in colors that are retiring. Um, I'm going to be using a punch today like I did last week. The second card, I'm also going to be using the Stamparatus, but for a different technique. And um, we'll be using Happy Tails on this card. It's a real cute little uh, card you can make and send off to your friends. And let them know that you're thinking about them. So, let's get started. The first card, since I've already... I'm, I'm kind of doing a spoiler alert here. I've already made this card in four out of the five rainbow colors. This one, I didn't put any embellishments, but I inserted a phrase, you're seriously the best. This comes with the seriously the best stamp set. And then you'll see lovely lipstick. And um, this, my mind is drawing a blank. Oh my goodness. This is Call Me Clover and Blueberry Bushel. So I'm gonna be working with pineapple punch this morning and again the stamp set is seriously the best so the first thing is that we're going to call cut our card base and our card base is portrait style and it is four and a quarter by 11 inches scored at five and a half I'm going to need a piece of white whisper white cardstock this is going to be my uh, cover and I'll be using some scraps to punch out my four petaled flowers. All right, so let me introduce you to the Stamparatus. This little machine comes with two plates so that you can actually do four different stamps at once. But for today's purpose, um, I'm gonna be using my Stamparatus that I've already uh, taped. Now, I taped it for the second project, but it's not necessary that you do this for most projects. Uh, you'll see why it's important the second project. But for now, since I've already used it, uh, marked it, I'm gonna use it to create my first project. So when you're using your Stamparatus, you're gonna place your cardstock, and these magnets that you're gonna use are super heavy duty, very strong. You wanna keep them apart. Um, I've heard a lot of my friends talk about how they snap literally in half if they uh, pop together too quickly. And um, fortunately, I've not had that experience, but I've taken their advice, and so I've put a little bit of tape on mine to keep that from happening. The other thing I'm going to do, as you'll notice, I repeated the word thanks, and I repeated it in the different colors for the rainbow effect. So what I'm going to do is line my stamp down on my card. Now, I'm going to tell you up front, here you see that I have 
put my words, my sentiments, to the left side of the card. Today, I'm going to try it on the right side of the card, and I'm going to reverse the effect. I'm going to put the ribbon to the left and the words to the right. All right, so I'm going to light the stamp down about there. So I'm going to remember I need to keep it close to the top because I'm going to repeat it four more times. Then I'm going to take my stamping plate and place it here in these notches. Let me make sure all of this is in the camera. And place it here. Okay, and it locks right in place and swivels easily. Now I'm going to bring my plate down. And because I have these cling stamps, it just adheres nicely. So see, there you go. I already have it in place where I want it. My magnets are gonna hold my paper in place. And I'm gonna start with the rainbow effect. I've chosen to go with Lovely Lipstick, Grapefruit Grove, Pineapple Punch, Call Me Clover, and Blueberry Bushel. So I'll start with my stamps in that order. Lovely Lipstick, I'm going to tap, tap, tap. Get some ink on that sentiment. Bring it down, press. Bring it back, and I have a very nice crisp image. So I'm done with lovely lipstick. I'm going to be using my chamois to clean off my stamp. And let me shift this. I didn't realize I must have the camera too close today. Um, my chamois, um, believe it or not, all those stains, they don't come off, but the ink does not um, transfer to your stamps. It takes it off. Every now and then as it dries out, I take it and I rinse it out in the sink. A little bit of ink might come out, but I never ruin my stamps and I keep them clean. All right, the next color I'm gonna use is Grapefruit Grove. Before I do that, here's the trick to this technique. I'm gonna pop up my plate and I'm gonna bring it down one notch. Bring it back in place. Now I'm gonna take my Grapefruit Grove, tap, 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 ink it up. Bring that plate down, press, press, and there we go. Another nice crisp stamp image. Wipe it clean. And again, I'm going to bring my Stamparatus notches down one. Get my pineapple punch ink. Tap, tap, tap. Bring my plate over, press down. And there I have another nice clean image. Clean off my words. And Bring my plate down again, one notch. Okay, I need to move some tools out of the way here. This time I'm gonna use Call Me Clover. Tap, tap, tap. Bring my plate around. Press, another nice clean image. Here's one of the benefits, many benefits too. There's a little bit of lightness at the top of the K. So I'm gonna ink my stamp one more time and just bring it back down and because it is anchored in place I can do that without worrying about my image smearing all right one more time I'm gonna clean my stamp pull up blueberry bushel tap 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 oops I forgot to bring it down one notch didn't I phew I'd have caught that as I started swinging around, but glad I did it sooner rather than later. And there we go. I now have a rainbow of the sentiment thanks. What a quick and easy way to make a thank you card. Naturally, you could do it in one solid color and just repeat the sentiment for emphasis. I like these colors are bright, it's springtime. And like I said, when you start off, you know, it's like, if you think about it, the very first set of Crayolas you ever were given were probably the packet of eight basic crayons, right? Had the 
five basic colors you see here, plus a brown and a black, and what a white, I think, that we rarely ever used unless we were doing a resist color. All right, so now all I have to do is remove my card, remove the magnets out of the way, get my card out of the way, tidy up my pad a little bit. Got a little messy there. It looks like I got some ink on it. Very easy to wipe off the stamp as well as my plate. And as you can see, I could have used the other side um, and then I could have stamped a different image there. Oops, as a matter of fact, one more moment. Let's go back to that because I did want to show you that. All right, so here I'm replacing the card and um, as I mentioned to you, this set is called Seriously the Best. So I have this phrase, you're seriously the best, and I want to insert it right here between the Grapefruit Grove and the Pineapple Punch because I think it'll stand out nicely with the black. And so I'm gonna put my plate back in place and I'm gonna bring it down, pick up the stamp, and I'm gonna give it some black ink Again, tap, 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 and bring that plate around. And right between the Grapefruit Grove and Pineapple Punch is my new sentiment, you're seriously the best. I had done that on a card previously, and I liked that effect. It was one of the last cards I had put together in preparation for today. So I thought, I need to do that. All right, there you go. <clears throat> Now let's get this out of the way, save it for our next project. And put this out of the way. All right, now all I have left is to decorate it with my four petal flower. And so with this, I've already punched them out, but let me just show you very quickly, in case you didn't see last week's video, which by the way, I'm learning how to upload them to YouTube. So I'm starting a YouTube channel Let's see how easy that was. So I just punch out my little four petal flower. I am going to use my bone folder and I'm going to just come to the petal and just curl up the very tip of that petal. I'm gonna do that to all four sides. Then I'm gonna grab this second petal and again, repeat the process, curl up those little tips of the petal. And then using a Stampin' Dimensional, put one on the center of that flower, peel it up, offset the other four petals so that it just makes a fuller flower. Now, you know, I didn't ever have time for the beauty of flowers other than I just enjoyed receiving them. When I was working, I was just always so busy with long days that I couldn't tell you the names of flowers. Now in my retirement stage, I'm starting to learn them. And uh, I know one of my last videos, um, I had a friend who helped me out with the name of a flower when I was working with the uh, hibiscus. And she was telling me the name of the other flower. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a couple of these enamel dots I'm gonna use lovely lipstick. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. I'm not even showing you how to use this tool well. This tool pick, pick tool has a putty end and that just works so much easier. I don't know what I was thinking, here we go. I use it all the time and I'm drawing a blank this morning, silly me. All right, there you go. So whatever the name of this little flower is, I've decided to put four little um, pollen buttons in the center. All right, I also have some pineapple punch ribbon. I'm gonna do a real quick double wrap. One, two, and just cut this. Put a little adhesive here. This is my snail adhesive.
course, now it needs to go on the bottom end. Put it in place. There we go. Now I have. You'll see how it's. I told you I was going to do it on the opposite end, so now it's on the left side of my card. There's so much that you can vary. That's the beauty of individual creativity, and that's why I purposely show this particular card in a variety of colors and a variety of styles. Now, probably one of the easiest ways to adhere this is with another um, Stampin' Dimensional. It'll hold on to that ribbon as well as the cardstock. And there you go. So initially, I had the card in lovely lipstick. Now it's in Pineapple Punch. This is Grapefruit Grove without the flower. Call Me Clover. And notice the other difference in this card. I opened it in the horizontal um, design. So this cardstock is five and a half by eight and a half. So literally you're taking your piece of cardstock, cutting it in half, um, holding it up lengthwise. So that's eight and a half by five and a half makes this style of card. And then there's your blueberry bushel. All right, very quick and simple. Oh, one other thing. Um, in this particular stamp set was the word congrats. And so I was kind of playing around with that uh, stamp apparatus with congrats. I think if I were going to do this, I might either raise congrats up a little bit or choose maybe just to put three in the center. There's all kinds of ways you can play with that. Okay, so very quick and easy, five cards, five colors, one stamp punch, and um, you can get the multi-pack of in-color cardstock. You can buy the five ink pads as a bundle. You save 10%. I will caution you, however, currently the bundle of in colors are on back order. They are scheduled to be back in stock the end of April. So um, that does give you at least a month to get them ordered. You will save 10% if you order all five of them at once, but they are um, available individually as well. All right, so our next card. This one uh, also uses the stamp apparatus. I'm, uh, the base of this card is in lovely lipstick. And I have, again, cut it in the uh, four and a quarter by 11. So I took my cardstock and sliced it in half vertically. And in this card, to keep everything very symmetrical, I used my stitched rectangle framelits. And very specifically, I used this one square piece. Well, it's not square, it's a rectangle, obviously. And this one is um, the one I use for Whisper White. And this one's about one and seven eighths by one and three eighths. Um, I measured it with a ruler, so that's as close to the measurement as I came up with. The other two, I used one to cut out the lovely lipstick outer frame. And that one is three and three fourths by two and three eighths. And then the black piece that's also a stitched rectangular frame framelit is three and three eighths by two inches. Now all these measurements, I do have them written down. Um, I have sent this to customers who purchased from me last week, but I also posted in my blog. So remember that you can find me at www.stampinggloria.com. So those measurements are available to you, those rectangular. This is probably one of the best investments I've made. As you can see, there's a variety of sizes of rectangular, uh, stitched rectangles rather, and they are great for labels, great for card backs, um, just all kinds of cool things you can do with them. And as you can see, I used while I was making a vertical card, I posted my rectangles horizontally and then offset one to the side. So let's get started with this one. Now the trick to this one, also using my um, Stamparatus, is one that gives a lot of us heartaches. 
When you use a large stamp such as Buffalo Check, a lot of times it's very hard to ink the whole thing evenly. And so when we stamp, we're very frustrated because you'll see it'll come out a little blotchy initially. And again, the beauty to the Stamparatus is that I can repeat my stamping with my card in place. Now, the big difference here is that because my card front is just ever so slightly larger or smaller than my card base, I've outlined here and if I put my magnets in the place, I'm going to have the, uh, a little bit of a lopsided of effect. Um, it'll, it'll interfere with my stamp. So what I, that the reason I put the tape was so that I could keep it anchored in the exact same place. So I know it's hard to see by camera, but the tape has a dimension to it. It has a little thickness, right? And so when I put my card there, I'm just pulling on it slightly. It's kind of anchored in place it won't go past that margin. So I'm, I'm counting on that placement, right? All right, the other thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to, as I slide into the camera a little bit more, I must have had the camera up too high today. Let me see if that helps some. There we go. I'm gonna ink my Buffalo Check it's a little harder to ink because it's so big. I also don't want to shake my camera too much. You can see these squares. Some of them are grabbing the ink a little better than others. And I'm mostly concentrating on the center. Okay, now I take this and bring it down on my card. And I press really hard to give it an even even weight across the now the cards gonna lift because it's stuck to the ink and that's okay because remember I have this frame now see my card how it's kind of splotchy okay I bring my card right back in place I hug the tape so that I know it's exactly in place. I go back, ink my buffalo check, try to get as much ink on those little squares as possible. Ooh, that looks pretty good. That looks actually pretty juicy. Okay, one more time. Let me just make sure this is in its exact place. Yep. Okay, here we go. Bring this back into the camera. Press. Press, press, press. Even pressure. Ta da! There you go. Now it's more solid and less blotchy. So now I'm going to take my cardstock. Actually, I probably should have done it one more time. I'm going to put my cardstock, but I, I'm trying to respect your time. I appreciate you joining me, but I know you have other things to do. Even in the days of stay at home, there's many things to get accomplished. All right, so there I lay the card front. Now I'm going to put my little um, I could use dimensionals, but I'm going to wait and use the dimensionals on the dog. Now, I did have a little bit of white spot there. The beauty of this card is I can just kind of cover that up. You won't even know it was there. But for the most part, like I said, that technique um, is really helpful, especially when you're stamping uh, mass producing cards. Some of you might participate in swaps. The mass production of cards is really hard keeping everything centered in the right place or the same place, I should say. And this is um, very beneficial for keeping your cards consistent. All right, grabbing a couple of extra tools here. I need a 
scrap of white because I'm going to stamp my dog. This set is called Happy Tales. Love the love, love, love this set. I've used it for my pet sitter. I've used it for a friend who lost her, her little fur baby. Um, it's just such a cute little set. All right, so um, let's see. First, let's go ahead and stamp the Friends Forever sentiment. Goodness, slippery hands today. Friends Forever in lovely lipstick. And I'll just set that aside. And then I have my scrap of white. And I'm going to ink up the outline of the dog. Put them close to the bottom of that page and you'll see why in a moment when I use the punch. Like I, yet last week I focused on using the punches because it's a great way to get started stamping. Um, they're economical, easy to store, and um, not a huge investment when you're getting started, and they're pretty versatile. All right, so this stamp uh, are the dots as in a Dalmatian dog, and I had to do some examining last night and some studying to make sure that I lined this guy up properly. The ones that are, uh, the two dots that are up here towards the top, those are belong to his ear. So the polymer stamps are intended so that you can see through them and layer your stamp more readily without going out of the line. And there you go, my Dalmatian. My dog has Dalmatian spots. Now I'm gonna pull up my Happy Tails punch. And again, like I did last week, I use it upside down so that I can see my uh, image. And I'm gonna stamp him out. There we go. This one happens to stamp out a little heart too. Maybe I'll throw that in there. That's kind of sweet. All right, I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back of my dog using my tick tool. Back here, and one down here. Oh, whoa, 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 I forgot to do something. Whoa, this little guy needs a collar. Oh my goodness. All my dogs have collars. They're stay-at-home dogs, but they have collars. And they, this one is lovely lipstick. Let me put his collar on him. There we go. And all my pets are so royally spoiled. I want to spoil my little Dalmatian here. And I am going to put a rhinestone on his collar. How many of y'all have dogs and cats? Huh? Okay, my cats have never worn a collar. I spent money, the very first cat I ever had, and learned that they do not wear collars. Anyway, my dogs have collars and they're all fancy and decorated. And so this one's gonna be spoiled with a little rhinestone. All right, now he's ready. Now he's ready. Let's get that second dimensional on. Let's pull our card up here. I'm also gonna put a dimensional, actually two, on the, on the back of Friends Forever. All right, so let's get this guy. I'll put him right here. Make sure he's sitting straight up. There we go. And then I put Friends Forever. I still gotta figure out where I'm gonna put my little heart because I want Friends Forever offset. Oh wow, that just really works too. Don't think I didn't notice that I didn't stamp that image very well, did I? I, could, I should have used my Stamparatus one more time. It would have just really nailed it, but I think my black ink pad needs some re-inking. All right, friends forever. Let's see, where could I put this little heart? Maybe there? Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess so. That'll work. I didn't leave enough room to put them here, so I'll put it on the other side. Put a little dab of Tombow liquid glue. I am so excited. Tomorrow, 
the demonstrators get to see the new catalog. Woohoo! I'm so excited. I always, it's so bittersweet because I always get so sad. Some of my favorite sets end up retiring. Then new ones come out and I make this long laundry list and I all I see is how much I'm going to be investing because I know I love, love, love what I do and so I just have to have them, just have to have them. So I make my list of what I'm gonna buy. I cry about the ones that retire. I still keep many of them and I use them, but as a demonstrator, I like to show you what's current. So um, oftentimes, there's not enough time for me to use my retired sets. I use them for friends and family when I'm not demonstrating. All right, so today we created, using our Stamparatus, let me show you this little tool again, this really handy little guy, does come with two plates. Here's the other plate. So as you can see, I could put a stamp here, I could put a stamp on the back of it and flip it over. I'll try to come up with some projects that shows that on another time, another video. I could have also put another one on this side and flipped it over. So you see, I could use this plate, and I have for my um, in-home classes. I really have done several cards before where we use the plates three and four times. We use the plates to um, create a background stamp and show how you can re-ink it and not lose the uh, image uh, and also darken it. Um, I showed you how you can stamp repeatedly by bringing the Stamparatus not, uh, plates down a notch at a time. And I showed you the five rainbow colors that are about to retire, and I really encourage you to consider those. Uh, nothing like a black ink pad and vibrant colors to get your stamping hobby started, if you haven't already. Um, I do want to remind you that I'm running a special this month. My website is www.stampinggloria.com. I am Stampin' Gloria's Crafty Corner. I have a workshop code that's also posted on my blog, but it's M-N-V-Z-H-T-7-D. If you purchase, um, use this workshop code so that I know you've ordered from me and so that I can give you this fabulous gift. It is a PDF, 40 pages long. Again, beautiful, perfect timing because this is using the rainbow colors. And it was a collaborative put together by the Sweet Stampin' Connection. There are five of us demonstrators that collaborated to put this together for you. You can earn it with a $35 or more purchase. I will send you this PDF file as well as uh, today's thank you cards for buying your order through me. So I've enjoyed my time with you folks very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. I hope you'll come back next Tuesday, 10 on Tuesday with Stampin' Gloria. Again, as I mentioned, I have started a Facebook channel. I'm just in the process of getting it going, trying to figure out, um, you remember, you're <laughs> I'm not the, I wasn't born as a digital native, so I'm very proud that I teach myself how to use these tools. So um, I am trying to set up my Facebook channel so that I can transfer these videos that I do weekly over there. Um, this week, those of us that have subscribed to Paper Pumpkin, we should be getting our Paper Pumpkin in the next day or two. And uh, once that hits, I'll make a separate video and just kind of give you a sneak peek and go through some of the instructions and show you a couple of alternatives as well. Thank you very much for your time. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care.